Hey, open your Bibles, chapter number 5 of Ephesians. If you got your Bibles this morning, chapter number 5 of Ephesians. It's good to see some of the old folks I know and, the, and uh, some of the new folks. Hello, y'all, and everything. Um, We've um, uh, been in Japan for about almost, um, almost uh, coming January, it'll be two years we've been in Japan and uh, getting used to everything and uh, all the different cultures and everything as far as that goes. Uh, not used to the food at all. Uh, I'm still having an issue with that. Uh, I'm not a rice person so much. And uh, we're having our friend day coming up here in three weeks at our church there in Yokosuka. And uh, last year we had friend day. We had 44 first-time visitors on our friend day. It was a blessing on that. And, uh, well, on the menu we had up there, we did not, I didn't think, we, when you have fried chicken and pulled pork and green beans, corn, you don't put rice on the menu, amen? And I didn't know uh, how many people here in Japan love their rice, amen? So we're going down there, to the, down there to get the food and everything and had a great time. And then one of the men, uh, he pulled me aside and says, Pastor, where's the rice? I said, rice didn't make the menu, brother. And I said, but fried chicken and pulled pork, you don't put no rice on that. He said, no, Pastor, no rice, no life, amen? So he, he made his wife go home and get the rice. They had rice already made up, and I guess they eat rice all the time. And they, she brought it back and put it on the table. And they ate the rice and fried chicken both. I said, whatever. So we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes this year. Amen, as far as that goes, you know. Uh, well, I was born in Columbus, Ohio, born again in West Virginia, called to preach in RAF Bentwaters, England. And then I... Uh, I uh, went to Bible College in North Carolina, so I've been kind of a little bit everywhere and so forth. So, But uh, chapter 5 of the book of Ephesians, we're going to pick up here in verse number 15 and 16. If you found your places there, the Bible says, See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. We're going to uh, talk during Sunday school hour on the stewardship of our time, trying to be good stewards of our time. The Bible says also in the book of uh, Corinthians, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. And so with this thought, we're going to talk about stewardship of our time. Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray you'll bless now the reading of thy word. Thank you for the Bible. I'm glad that the Bible never changes. I'm glad that uh, Lord, the Bible is relevant for our day and time and what, what our needs are we're going through. And I just pray you watch over our lives. We pray this now in Jesus' name, Lord, and amen. Uh, so here we talk about here in verse term 15 and 16 of the book of Ephesians about time. A steward is a servant who manages everything for his master, but who himself owns nothing. And when it comes down to our Christian life and being a child of God and being a Christian, we have to realize that God owns everything. Everything we have, God owns. Um, keep that thought there and turn in your Bible to the book of um, 1 Corinthians chapter number 6. Let me show you a verse here. 1 Corinthians chapter number 6 in your Bibles. Look at verse number 19 and 20. Very good verse. It says here, What know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and ye are not, what? Your own. For you are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. When you become a Christian, God owns you. You become God's property. All right? And so, and a lot of Christians sometimes, they have issues when it comes down to, well, uh, what does the Bible say about this? And there's so many things that, People, you know, lives change and different things happen. Different fads come in, fads go out and everything. Um, but one thing is constant. If you're a child of God, God bought you. He redeems you. You're his. Amen. And so if you ever do anything to your body or try to change your body, and, and I had five kids and four boys and a girl, and um, I remember one of my boys, uh, he was talking to his brother uh, out of four boys, one of my sons had an extremely long, big nose. I don't know where it came from. Whatever, that's what he had, you know. And, um, and so 
his brother was making fun of him at the t dinner table and said, why do you have a big nose? Why do you have that for? And so there was a big discussion and everything, and they, they said, Dad, so I, they said, Dad, why do, why do I have it? Because Johnny said, why do I have it? By the way, are we, are we on Facebook Live? Or are, we, are we live live streaming? Oh, okay, good. I just remembered that just now. I better be careful because sometimes my boys follow me around when I preach, and so I get text messages afterwards, amen? So anyways, uh, anyway, I just told him, I said, hey, God made you special, son, amen? Well, I don't know why they got those, well, some got big ears. I don't know why, but I just say God made them special, you know? You know? And, uh, and so when it comes down to our issues of our lives and what we do and everything, I'm glad that when I got saved, God took ownership of me. And the best thing in my life I could ever have done many, many years ago was to give everything I had to God, my talents, my time, my treasures, my possessions, whatever I have, I just gave it over to him. And he takes a lot better care of it than I did. You know, when we came over to Japan and getting ready to move, we bought a foreclosed house there in Georgia. And uh, uh, we got a really, really good price for that house uh, and so forth. And we're getting ready to sell it. But it wasn't the best time to buy our house. It wasn't the best time to sell our house. But God told us to move so we come back overseas to be missionaries. And so we, we were doing that. And then uh, about three months later, in the process of selling my house, an extraordinary thing happened right down the street from us. Shaquille O'Neal, you all know who Shaq is, don't you? He bought a house, five houses from my house. And when he bought that house, man, my property just went right on up, amen? And I was so, thank God for Shaq, amen, you know? <laughs> I was saying, hey, you know? And so one day he was riding his bicycle down on the street. So I'm, I, have, I have me a Dodge... Ram 1500 Hemi, and I, I, I was, had my wife in the car. We were going to go get something to eat and everything, and there was Shaq riding his bike on, our, our, on Brian's drive. And so I pulled over, and Tonda said, what are you doing? I said, I'm going to talk to Shaq. Right there he is, man. I said, right there he is. So I pushed my window down. And I said, what's going on, Shaq? How you doing? I'm your neighbor down the street and everything. Because you know, he, he was prior military kind of like. He was over there in Germany many years ago and everything. So, and, uh, but he was real nice and kind and everything. I didn't tell him thank you for making my house go up, but I did. That, that was part of the conversation in my mind. I mean, you know, you know. Um, but uh, I mean, sometimes when it comes about time and timing is everything, and when it comes to your time and my time, it also is important. And we all have 168 hours in a week. Now you may have different talents than me. You may be better at certain things, and maybe I'm better at certain things than you are. But there's one thing we all have in common. We have the same amount of time when it comes down during the week and so forth. And so um, here in verse number uh, 15 uh, and 16, it says, see that you walk circumspectly. And that gives the idea of walking diligently, okay? Be careful not to get caught up in the things around you. Don't get so bogged down with things and, you know, that you don't take care of your time, um, you know, with, 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 um, with the ministry and having five children, uh, it was really taxing sometimes uh, that I had to uh, say no to certain things in order to say yes to certain things uh, with my children growing up. If you've got young children, um, that is the greatest uh, investment you have is investing in your children, taking time with them, um, spending time with them. And with my four boys, um, we homeschooled our kids uh, when they were, were and um, uh, they've all, four of them graduated from college, and my little girl just got married, and uh, she, uh, she, she found some guy that liked her, and so uh, I had to, I made her wait for uh, a couple of years after, while she was in college, I made her wait to get married, but uh, anyways, I was trying to make the wait before she was 45, but that didn't work, you know, but um, anyhow, um, it, it's important that we all take our time and, and invest them and so forth. And so it's important that we, we do that. And remember, too, the government didn't give you your kids. Uh, the church didn't give you your kids. God gave your kids to you. And so you've got to make sure you spend time with them. And, 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 and that's the greatest, greatest value you could ever have is your children and spending time with them and so forth. Um, and so here at verse number 15, it says here, um, <clears throat> See, then you walk circumspectly, 
be not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time, it gives the idea of rescuing and recovering our time from waste <coughs> to improve it for great and important purposes. So when it comes down to your time, be careful, be careful of time wasters and those things. That so I want to give you a couple thoughts here about that, okay? What kind of things, as far as our time, uh, what should we spend our time with and how should we manage our time and be a good steward of our time? Well, number one, I want you to mention here, time with Christ. I want you to spend time with Christ. And, and, and that idea is, is that you, you pray and talk to the Lord. Um, and it's important that we spend time in prayer. Now, some folks say, preacher, what do you mean about praying and how do I pray? Well, you know, back in the day when I first came overseas, we had calling cards, AT&T calling cards. And, and you, you, you bought those calling cards and you could, it was like a dollar and 19 cents a minute when I first came to Germany way back in the day and everything. And so as a missionary, and uh, so um, it was really important that you made sure that my, my, my wife talked to her mother. She had things written down. She had a list to make sure she covered every little thing because when that time was gone, that's all she had, you know, and it was gone. Uh, and so, but I had no problem with Tonda. Uh, she would talk to her mom, and she could talk to her mom for hours because she had so many things to talk about. And so when you talk to God, it's like talking to your best friend, or it should be when you talk to God, when you pray and you open up to him and you tell him about your concerns and your fears and your different things and whatever. Um, turning your Bible over to Luke chapter number 18 real quick. Luke 18, the Gospel of Luke, Matthew, Mark, and Luke is the third book of the New Testament. Luke chapter number 18, uh, this is a good verse here in verse number one. It says, and he spake a parable unto them in the, to this end that men are always to pray and not faint. Always have an attitude of prayer. Be willing to pray at a moment. You know, if someone asks you at church, hey, pray for me about this, you know what I try to do at that moment? Pray for them right away. Because a lot of times if someone asks me to pray for them, what's the normal thing we do sometimes? We forget. You know, say we don't mean to what we do. Okay? Open your Bible to chapter 5 of First Thessalonians. Chapter 5 of First Thessalonians. Look at, there's a good verse here um, uh, that I memorized many, many years ago. Chapter 5 of 1 Thessalonians, and look at verse number 17. Pray with what? Pray without ceasing. Having a constant attitude in your mind about prayer. So when it comes to time with Christ and praying, make sure you pray with him and you talk to him about things. And <clears throat> maybe you want to talk about, you, 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 want, you want to ask him to, God, I know I've got my <clears throat> two grandchildren now, and um, I've already, when my first grandson was born, about a little under two years ago, I started praying for his salvation. And now my second grandchild, I'm praying for her salvation. And so I'm already praying. And so when you pray about things, you pray, you know, you pray about things that are important to you. Uh, you maybe you got a problem at work, and maybe you got a problem with your car, maybe you got a problem with your family, uh, maybe you got a problem with your mother in law. I don't know. Amen. You know what I'm saying? I have a very good mother in law, amen. She cooks real good and don't say a word, amen. That's real good, amen. I like that. You know, so you know, uh, she's got a good black iron skillet, amen. You know, and she can cook that gravy and biscuits. What a blessing on that, you know. So you know, and uh, so, but uh, um, so, but prayer. Take time with God and, and pray about things and pray pray for your children, pray for your husband, pray for your wife, pray for all those things. Pray for your vehicles, amen. Pray, just pray. You can pray about anything you want to pray about, you know. And it, it's and and. Um, it's, it's where you can, and one thing about praying to God, he won't tell nobody. Amen? He won't tell nobody. You know, you can pray and talk to him. You know, whatever. And uh, this is, one of my friends uh, told me about something um, that uh, um, uh, he saw something on Facebook. And uh, he saw something on Facebook. So he told someone about it, and the person that posted it on Facebook got upset with him because he told someone about it. And so he called that person on the phone. He says, well, when you put something on Facebook, 
It's out there for everyone to see. So if you didn't want no one to know about it, then why would you post it? Amen. You know, like it just it. So when you pray to God, it's it's secret. He won't tell nobody. You know what I'm saying? So prayer, time with Christ. Okay. Uh, how about this here? Time on reading your Bible. You know what I'm saying? Speaking about Facebook, you know, you had to have your face in the book. Amen. You know, put your face in God's word and read His word, study His word, and so forth, and get wisdom and knowledge as those things um turn over your bible to chapter 4 of first timothy let me show you a couple of verses here on that thought chapter 4 of first timothy talking about being a good steward of our time okay um look here in verse number 12 that no man despise thy youth but be thou an example of the believers in word and conversation and charity and spirit and truth and faith and purity First 13, till I come, give attendance to what? Reading. Hey, spend time in your Bibles. Spend time in the Word of God. How about only this? How about studying the Bible, okay? Chapter 2 of 2 Timothy. Chapter 2 of 2 Timothy. And look at verse number 15. It says here, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of Truth. There are a lot of people right here in this community here, like my community of Yakuska, there are a lot of folks that do not rightly divide the Bible. Uh, people go to church in this community. They go to church up there in my community and so forth, and they are not rightly dividing the word of truth. Uh, make sure you go to a place that takes the Bible, and you don't need to rewrite the Bible. We need to reread the Bible, amen? You know what I'm saying? The Bible is relevant. It's good for our day and time as far as that goes, all right? So it's important that we take time. One more verse on the word of God before I go on to the next part here. Turn over to Psalm 119. Psalm 119 in your Bibles. Psalm 119. When you get there, Psalm 119, look at verse number uh, 11. It says here, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Memorize the Bible, amen? It will help you and prevent you from doing things and saying things and getting involved in things that you shouldn't be involved in, okay? Uh, when it comes down to this. So uh, time with Christ. If we're going to, be a good steward of our time. If we're going to redeem the time, we need to spend time with Christ. Make sure you pray and make sure you're, you know, when I pray to God, that's me talking to him. And when I read his word, that's him talking to me. Amen. Uh, this is a love letter from God. Amen. Right here that we have. And uh, I remember I got a box in my dresser that my wife and me, we, we corresponded before we got married. And I still got a lot of things that she wrote me. Uh, there. Uh, now, I did not write her as much as she wrote me. I called her on the phone, amen, you know, back in those days. But uh, I have a lot of things that she wrote me and, and everything, and I kept them in that box. And so, it, to me, they were very precious, and I, I look back at those things, and they're a blessing to me, all right? So, time with Christ. Number two, how about this? Time at church. If we're going to be a good, good steward of our time, we need to spend time not only with Christ, but number two, time at church. Um, and a lot of times, people don't make time for church. Um, the most important house in your community is not the state house or the courthouse or your house or the White House. It's God's house, amen? That's where things happen. That's where the Word of God is preached and so forth. And so folks, well, preacher, I can worship at my home. You might be able to pray and talk to God, read your Bible at home and so forth, but when it comes down to the preaching of the Bible and the teaching of the Bible, God has ordained the local New Testament church, amen? So spend time at church. And some folks say, preacher, I don't have time. Hold on now. You may have different talents. You may have different treasures, but we all have the same amount of time. So it, it, it's, it's our priority schedule, what we, what we do on priority, whatever, okay? Um, Delegation is important, too. You know, if you've got a, a very important job, whatever, at work, whatever, and all jobs are important. I'm not saying that in the wrong way. All jobs are important. But delegation, you know, making sure you get competent people there. When I was in Belgium at Shea headquarters, I had 40 people working for me there when I worked there in Belgium as a missionary pastor, and I had uh, 40 folks working. I had four or five good, good managers working for me, and I made sure I spent a lot of time with them so I was able to do what I needed to do and but they were able to do what they needed to do as well too so spending time and making sure you delegate and so forth okay and my thinking is this you got someone you pay a, to do a job they ought to do the job amen be there on time and so forth when I was in the military um, now you know I was prior Air Force so 
Uh, I'm up there with the Navy right now, and it's rough sometimes, you know, being with the Navy, trying to learn all their different acronyms and everything. And I've been on a submarine. I went down to the sub there a couple of months ago, and I said, man, that one guy, he, he's an E-8, and he was showing me where he stepped on the submarine. And I said, I, I mean, he had this much space, I mean. My belly, I, I couldn't even get in that thing, amen. I tried to get in that thing. I couldn't get in that thing, you know. And uh, so, but uh, uh, I, I, I thank God for that. I appreciate that and everything. But I, and I, when I preach up there, I have an Air Force mug that I, pre- I drink out of. Well, one of the guys took the mug. They hid it. I couldn't find it for four months. They bought me a brand new Navy mug, amen. So that's what I was drinking out of. So I finally found the mug, amen. So, you know, and uh, so... But we have a good time and everything as far as that goes. And uh, I like to aim high, not aim low, and all that stuff, you know. And uh, be all you can be in the Army, but uh, whatever on that, too, you know. And uh, I know you're prior. Are you, aren't you Army yourself? I, I remember you. I just remember just now. You said, oh, well, I didn't want to forget the Army people. You start as far as that goes, you know. But uh, anyways, time at church. Make sure you're at church, okay, and that you're involved in church, okay. And by the way, it should not be like a, you know, well, I, I remember, I, I heard one guy tell me, well, when I was a younger preacher, I was drugged to church. My mama drugged me there. I said, did your mom drug you to the table to eat? Did she drug you to take a shower and bath and everything else? It's like, it's, 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 it was like a bad thing for his mama taking him to church. No, it was a good thing that she was doing, you know? And uh, so uh, spend time in church, Sunday school, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night visitation, Going out there and giving out gospel tracts and telling people about the Lord, everything stuff, you know. Uh, it's, it, every Christian should, when it comes down to this here, make time for church. By the way, what you make, when you what you what you make a priority in your life, then your children will make a priority on their life. Now I'm I'm a lot older. I've got children that are married now, uh, and all my children by this so far. I got a 27, 26, 25, 24-year-old, and my daughter is 21. Um, they're all in church. They're not they're living in my house no more, and they're all serving the Lord. As of this moment, what's going to happen tomorrow? I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You know, I hope and pray they always stay in church. But now, when, and by the way, we made church a family thing. You know, uh, we, we cleaned the church as a family. You know, we came to church as a family. We served God as a family. We came to church. We made it a priority. Not just because I was a preacher, but because I was a Christian father. And I, had a, I was a husband, and I was a dad. You know, and, and it's so important. Now, I came from a very dysfunctional family. Uh, my dad was not a Christian. And my mom was married three times. My stepfather, my real father, I never met, never know where, don't, never met him before. Uh, my, my stepfather was married five times had 15 kids. I mean, you talk about dysfunctional. The sheriff knew my dad by name, you know, had all kinds of problems growing up. So when I got older and I got saved and I began to grow in the Lord and everything, you know, uh, I wanted to have a family and I wanted to marry someone that said, hey, when we have children, they're going to have the same mom and same dad all the way through. Amen. Doesn't mean it's easy. But that was our goal. I mean, that was our, our dream, you know. And um, I had applied for it. I was getting ready to, when I was in the Air Force, I, before God called me to preach, I, I had applied to go to the Air Force Academy. I, I, and I really wanted to fly. I wanted to do all those things and everything. And um, I got approved and everything. I had to give them t- total of 10 years, five years of school and five years, whatever, on that. And I was getting ready to go. And then we had a missions conference at the church. And I got ready to sign my last document, and um, the, uh, um, the mission conference came, and God spoke to my heart, and I walked forward at the altar, and I said, Lord, I'll do whatever you want me to do, and God changed my whole direction. So I did not go there. I got out of the military, went to Bible college and everything, and I really wanted to fly really bad, so God got me to Audubon in Germany. Man, man. I had a BMW and a Mercedes. Because over there in Germany, Fords and Chevrolets are in America. But in Germany, BMWs and Mercedes were everywhere, amen. And I would, oh, I had a nice 740 Beamer and a 420 Mercedes. Man, it was a blessing, amen. So I got to fly on the Autobahn, amen, you know. But um, the, uh, um, 
My wife, was, she didn't like the fact I drove so fast, but over there in Germany on the Autobahn, it's made to go fast. They, you know, the, the roads and the cars and the tires and all that stuff and everything, you know. But, uh, hey, spend time with church and your family. Make it, an, make it a good time. Make it an enjoyable time. And, you know, when you got church people, when you got people in church, you're going to have issues. You're going to have problems sometimes. That's just part of it. But uh, the same time is, I know one thing. Jesus has never disappointed me. He's never failed me and never let me down. Now, I'll let you down. You'll let me down. But he's never let me down. Amen. And when I come to church, who am I really serving? Jesus. Amen. That's who I'm serving. Okay. So, number one, time with Christ. Time with church. Number, number two. Number three, trying to be a good steward of your time. How about time with your companion? Time with your companion. Spend time with your husband and your wife. Spend time with that and so forth. You know, uh, I know when we first got married, went to Germany, we did not have any babysitters. We didn't know anybody uh, there as missionaries there in Germany. Didn't know anybody, and it was very, very uh, dif difficult because um, we were not able to go on uh, dates sometimes because of that and so forth. And um, But now it's so different now. We're empty nesters, and we got uh, the home to ourselves. I get all the leftovers, amen? That's a blessing too right there, you know. When I had five, four boys, teenage boys, it was a hard thing to get leftovers, you know. But now, spending time with your companion and uh, let her know uh, normally on Sunday morning when I get ready to go to church, uh, my wife always puts my collar down, always. That's her job on Sunday mornings. So I sent her a picture this morning, and I said, how does the, how does the collar look? She said, it looks okay. I said, I was really nervous because she always fixes my collar, you know. And, uh, and so, but, you know, spending time with your companion and spending time uh, with that. Turn in your Bible to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6. Let me show you some things here, out of here. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, the fifth book of the, New Test of, of the Old Testament. Deuteronomy chapter number 6. Um, look here, look here some verses here. Look at verse number 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Verse 6. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. Verse 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and thou shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou lettest, liest down, and when thou risest up. You know, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and thou shalt be as a frontless between thine eyes. First number, verse number 7 talks about basically your whole walk of life. Whenever you're doing things, make sure that God is the key, you know. And I, I think that when it comes to our companions, our husbands and our wives and so forth, whatever that, you know, um, we have time with our children, time with our companion. Uh, but Jesus is the super glue. He's the, he's everything. Uh, he is the, um, you know, there are, there are some folks that have the wrong philosophy when it comes to uh, their, their mindset. That some folks believe that man is the center of everything. And they have the idea that it's called anthropocentric. Anthro for man. Anthropocentric. Man is the center. But we are Christocentric. Christ is the center of everything. Um, if he is the hub, your spokes will be, and your wheel will be okay. He's got to be the main thing, the main focus where everything goes into. And, and sometimes if we're not careful, then we don't, we get, we get so busy. And by the way, if you're too busy for God, you're just too busy. You've got to spend time, you know, if you don't come apart with God and spend time with God, you will come apart because there will be nothing there to hold everything down. What, what, what's undergirding you? What's your foundation you're, you're holding on to? So it's important that we spend time not only with Christ and the church and with companion, okay, but also number four, and lastly here, time with your career. Okay, you don't, don't give up on your job. Make sure you, 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 you're Johnny on the spot. And when I first joined the, uh, the military, we, have, we had a guard mount, and sometimes our commander would walk down there, and if you had a good haircut, your boots were shined, everything was good, he would just give you a day off. Just give you a day off, you know what I'm saying? And I always try to get them days off, you know, so, you know. If he would just, and all you had to do was keep your hair cut and, and look sharp because that's what he was trying to promote, you know, so, you know, as far as that goes. So time with our career, okay? Turn in your Bible to chapter 20, 
two of, of Matthew real quick, please. Matthew 22. Let me show you a verse here. I'm almost there. Matthew 22. And look in verse number 21. It says here, they say unto him, Caesar's. Then said he unto them, render therefore unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's and unto God the things that are God's. Amen. Make sure you have that balance in your life when it comes to having that right there, okay? Um, make sure you're prompt. Um, if you're on time, you're what? You're late, you know? If you've got a place to be there, make sure you're on time, okay? Um, your performance needs to be bad. I mean, a Christian should be the best employee that they got, okay? Uh, do your best on that, you know? Um, we, uh, we had... Uh, we had a in the air in the air. I don't uh, I, in the navy. I can't remember, but I know in the air force they have what they call below the zone. When I was in the military, you still got it now in the below the zone. You know, you get a free stripe if you do your if whatever like that. You know, we had three stripes out of five hundred people. You know, and man, I was trying my best to get that below the zone. I mean, you know, and uh, and so um, we had three stripes there given away, and I was the third one picked. I was just so happy, amen, because I didn't have to test for it, but I had to make sure I was sharp. I was good to go. You know, all those different things, you know. And so I'm just trying to say to us, when it comes down to it, um, make sure your performance, that you're doing the best you can and so forth, and, and also be balanced. Don't be, don't be so where you're so much working all the time, but you ain't got time for your family. And, your, and, and, and you can do it. You can do it. It's hard, but you can do it, okay? You can do it. And then lastly here, uh, be, be, be cautioned here um, when I come here. But make sure that you uh, make sure that you um, be careful that when you go to work, you, you you're working there. Okay. Sometimes if you go to work and you see some Christians, they're doing God's work on their work time schedule. Got to be careful about that. Okay. You know. Um, did you all see last week? I thought it was really interesting. I don't know how it's going to play out, but there was a police officer that um, got sentenced in Houston. My son lives outside of Houston, but uh, he uh, this lady walked in her apartment, thought it was her apartment. She walked into the wrong apartment, killed somebody, and then she went on trial, and they found her guilty, gave her 10 years of, of prison time. And then the, the, the son of the man that was killed, or the, or the brother, he got on the court case, uh, on the um, courtroom, and he was talking to the lady, and he got up and gave her a hug and forgave her for what she did. Well, then... Uh, right after that, the judge left the bench, brought her Bible to the one that she just sentenced, and opened the Bible and said, you need to read John 3.16. The judge was talking to the lady who's going to go to prison. And uh, everyone said, well, you can't do that as a judge and everything. And I said, what? That's what America needs more. What we go, I mean, the, 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 the lady was found guilty. She's got to serve her time and so forth. But her, her biggest thing is she's got to be get, get right with God, you know, you know? And as far as that goes, so so making sure that we um, uh, do things right. I mean, even, I think about uh, this sometimes too. I think about Chick Fil A. Normally they're closed. We know they're closed on Sundays. But you know, every now and then, when a national disaster happens, something really bad happens. What do they do? They open up and they help the people, uh, and so forth, and everything. And what a blessing it is that that, that there are people out there. There are there are, there are people out there, and there are companies out there that still value biblical values and uh, you can't improve on the bible you know uh, if you follow what god says god's gonna take care of you so be a good steward of your time all right time with christ time with your companion time at church and time uh, with your career and, and god will bless you on that and so walk circumspectly be careful and make sure that you do the right thing when it comes to how you spend your time all right and um the uh, if you if you invest uh, with your time, uh, and, and again, um, uh, I, I love the fact now that um, um, my son, my oldest son, uh, his baby when he was born, he had some complications, and it was hit and miss for my, my, my grandson for about um, a couple days. I didn't know if my grandson was going to live or die and so forth. And um, so my son told me after the fact, that uh, he went into the uh, ICU in you know, the prenatal the, the prenatal care there, and um, the ICU unit there, and my, his son was right there and didn't know if he was going to live or die. And my son said, Dad, 
at that moment, I got on my knees and I prayed to the Lord. He said, "Is this is something that I cannot handle, that God, God was able to handle, you know? And I'm telling you, that to me is worth more than a billion dollars that my son, when he couldn't figure out what to do, he called upon the Lord in that time of need. And that's what we try to do. We try to pass that down, pass that heritage down to our children that when we're gone, we're not here no more, they can still call upon God and God can help them. Amen. So be a good steward of your time and invest in your children, invest in your wife and your, your husband. Do those things there and don't forget time with Christ and time at church. Amen.